Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Listen Along. This week, I'm listening to I Became Birds uh, by Home Is Where with Brandon from Home Is Where. And uh, you'll be, you can hear Brandon right now, but you can't you can't see her. Well, I'll get to a screen where you will be able to. But you can say hi really quick, Brandon, if you want. Hi, really quick, Brandon, if you want. Great. That's enough. Uh, yeah. So if you've never tuned into this before, basically, we're listening to the entirety of an album. And basically, I'm sharing like albums that I love and gushing about them. And if I'm lucky, I get to have on uh, at least like an artist or someone from the project that, that worked on it that came to its uh, creation on the show with me so that they can talk about it. We'll play the album it's in, in its entirety, but the music won't be coming through the stream. So uh, here we go. I'm going to bring up this image first. I'm going to look at the band camp for Home Is Where. We're going to check that out and be like, ooh, look at this band camp. It has some nice Simpsons imagery. And then uh, I'm going to say, hey, you should purchase this album. You should get some merch. And then we're going to go on. And uh, you can wait until after to do that just in case you're like, oh, but what about my taste? And I'm like, oh, but it's probably not that much money. But it's okay. Uh, I get it. If you have the means, buy the album, buy the merch, do all that stuff. Then after that, uh, we're going to open a streaming service of your choice. I use the green music app, but I do not endorse it, nor do I love it. And, uh, you can choose any other, which ones like the fruit that has a bite out of it. You know, you can do that as well. Uh, you're going to wait for a three, two, one go on go. We're going to all hit play. And that means here at the end, you should be synced up with me. So Brandon and I should be synced up. You should be synced up with us. And hopefully, even if we aren't like fully in sync, it's not so far off that we're like, oh, this part's really cool and I love it. And you're like, oh, what? I don't even hear music. So uh, it should be fine. Don't worry about it too much. I'm going to take this image away now. Boom. It's gone. All right. You might have noticed that I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> and with this shirt, I, I'm going to stand up and it's going to be a little bit out of focus, but you just have to bear with me. It's the first run of the Abolish the Police t-shirts that we did a while back where we donated all the proceeds to the organization Black and Pink. Uh, also, check out Black and Pink. They're a great organization. Prison abolition. Uh, they do a lot for incarcerated individuals like book clubs and making sure that they can get like writing and reading materials and uh, generally just like very geared towards queer black uh, individuals who are imprisoned I mean, for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, and it's a great organization. You should check it out. But this time around, we're doing Project NIA or NIA. You'd think I would have looked up if it's pronounced or if it's an acronym, but I didn't. But Project NIA uh, is where this round of the t-shirts is going. And let's take a look at that. Boom. Did I do it? Yes. Abolish the police shirts, pre-order and signed vinyl raffle. And all of the money is going to Project Nia and organizers based in the Minneapolis community who are directly focused on the needs of the people that live there. So we're splitting the money between that stuff. You can type exclamation point abolish in the chat and it will bring up the landing page on the run for cover store. Uh, so we've got the shirt right there. You can see the design mm. and that's by Nico dot Chang on Instagram. Great design. So thankful. It's, it's really wonderful. And then we've got the vinyl. Oh, look the signed vinyl. So we have the, um, the glow in the dark one over here. That's going to be a signed vinyl. And then we have the test presses over here and, uh, the prizes for that, you can enter the raffle on that same landing page. I believe if you buy a shirt, it automatically enters you into the raffle. That was something that we had talked about doing. I don't know if it happened. So to be safe, buy a raffle ticket as well. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. So signed raffle for the vinyl. Abolish the police t-shirts. Literally all of the money. Like we're going to we're going to produce it at, at cost to us and donate all of the money to the the charity and the, the Minneapolis organizers that we were talking about. So no worries about where the money is going. It's going directly to those communities. And I would appreciate it a lot if you all checked it out, maybe buy a shirt, do that kind of stuff. So thank you. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to say hi to a little bit of the chat people right now. See who we got in here. I saw Chill Wave in here. I wonder what you're doing here. Um, <laughs> uh, Sister Slug, we got in here. Um, let's see, Vario6. Uh, I mean, any rats in the chat says Chill Wave. That's right. You know, you come into a Glass Beach chat, you got to have some rats. Amber says, love the little mustache. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Chill Wave uses their own media player. Music beat? Of course they do. Oh, wow. I love you, Chill Wave. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, and yeah, explanation point. Um, listen, by the way, in the chat, will bring you to the Home is Where band camp. So exclamation point listen is the Home is Where band camp. Exclamation point abolish is the landing page for the shirts and the vinyls and everything. Um, Glass Super Jan says yes to shirt entering you in the raffle and can purchase additional raffle entries as well. Yeah, you can purchase as many raffle entries as you want. Just keep going. Just go. All right. And uh, Classic John is here as well. I just went until 2002. Nav the, I think Nav the. I want to say hi to all those people and let's get into it. All right. Final thing, schedule. And then I'll, and then I'll go to the page where all of you can see Brandon. I know <laughs> I'm keeping you in the dark for so long. Uh, it's okay. This is uh, what I have coming up. I haven't done one of these before because I didn't know what I had coming up, but here we go. Boom. So we have uh, May 8th, uh, cheek face and I'm doing empathetically. No with, with them. And then May 15th, I'm doing uh saccharin with uh, pink shift, their newest EP. And then on May 22nd, I'm doing Origami Angels Somewhere City. Although, don't tell them this, but I'm leaving it open to doing their new record because I haven't had a good chance to like fully listen to it. And uh, if I just adore it, I might like message them and be like, hey, <laughs> can we, can we? Uh, yeah, and then May 29th, I have Chris Farron on uh, doing Born Hot. And then on June 5th, uh, I believe I'm just, I think it's just going to be Julia from Rat Boys, but I'm not positive. So I'm just going to say Rat Boys and we're doing Happy Birthday Rat Boy. Uh, their, their newest LP that they just released for their 10 anniversary of like releasing music, which I'm super stoked about. So it's going to be great. All right. Check out all those. It's always Saturday at noon Pacific. Saturday noon Pacific. Cool. And... I will now go to a page where you can see Brandon. Here we go. Are we all ready? Boom. This, you should be a little circle. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, we're little circles now. Hello. So oh. this is the band camp for home is where you see that. Yes. Very, very Simpsons. Uh, very Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our, our buddy Robin does all of our uh, art for us. They're, they're awesome. Oh, cool. Hell yeah. Wait, um, is is it one person who's just like oh, is constantly doing your art? Because we do, yeah. The, yeah, we do the same thing with Dax. Yeah, we got you know we got to maintain the aesthetic. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's great. Yeah, I really like the layout of your of your page. White is the white is bold. It's bold yeah. to go with white, but it also works really well with like the orange text and everything, especially based on you know your album cover. Yeah, we didn't. I didn't change the the coloring of the text up until we were gonna right before this record drop because it was it was horrible. I'll admit it looked freaking terrible when we had like our mouse to smile uploaded. But I yeah thought it needed a little change up. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, everyone's saying hi to you in the chat, by the way. Chill. I see them and they're all very nice. Yeah, Chill Wave saying hi. Classic John Hello, saying hi. Wave. Well, saying Hello. <laughs> saying Brandon is there. <laughs> Uh, oh. could we, could y'all let me know if Brandon and I are like normalized as far as audio is concerned? Like I'm not too loud. Brandon's not too loud. I just need to know. Cause it's not really something that OBS lets you do very well beforehand. It's hard to monitor. Joe wave says you are normalized. <laughs> you are normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Cool. Levels are pretty good. Sound is perfect till 2002. Great. Okay. So this we're, we're about to get into it. We can talk a little bit, Brandon. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to our listening screen with the overlay and everything. Um, it's, it's gonna be great. I I made a special overlay just for you being here. Oh, let me. It's uh, I'm trying. I think I got it. 
The uh, there we go. Nice, very nice. Yeah. yeah, come on, come on in. My girlfriend's going to work, so she's gonna say bye. Oh real quick. yeah, okay. I thought there was like everybody, a ghost. Everybody say hi to Haley. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. I love you, mom. Have a good day at work. We're not, no PDA though. I can. I hey, I can go to a different screen really quick if you want to say bye <laughs> properly. She's gone. Okay. <laughs> I blew it. I fucking blew it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I've ruined everything with my stream. Uh, I'm so sorry. No, no, it was it was me. Okay, cool. Don't blame yourself. Uh, yeah. So basically, um, I know that down at the bottom, I have Harmony Woods on my pulled up on my Spotify. Don't worry. Uh, I'm, sorry. I, you're good. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna be playing that today. That was last week. And uh, with that, I will say, uh, after today, if you couldn't catch this whole thing or if you couldn't be here. Uh, I'm going to put this up on the Second Glass Beach channel. So the YouTube channel, the Second Glass Beach channel. And that's where all of the listen-alongs live. They're also in a playlist called Listen Along. Pretty much as soon as we're done here, I'm going to like upload this and it'll be live on Monday. Uh, so y'all can check it out on there. Return to this whenever you want. This is essentially going to be album commentary, kind of. Uh, so <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah, that's where it'll live. You know, show your friends, do whatever you gotta do. And that's where the Alchemist Rats Beg Bashful remixes one is. That's where the Melee by Dogleg one is with Alex and Chase from Dogleg. That's where the Harmony Woods one is uh, for Graceful Rage with Sophia from Harmony Woods. All of them are on there. They're really great. All of the guests have been super wonderful. Had a lot of very, very cool, insightful things to say about their records. It's been pretty exciting to do this so far, and I am excited to move into this uh, because I listened to this record, and I loved it. You know, do you know Knife Punch sent it to me early? No. Oh, wait, maybe. I don't remember. They sent it to a lot. <laughs> they sent it to so many people. I don't know. Yeah. That's cool, though. Yeah. No, it was great. And I, I, I listened to it, and I loved it, and I was stoked for it to come out, and... I've been listening to it a lot since then. So this is, this is excellent. This fits the criteria of my show. Nice. Okay. I can't get over how good your little overlay screen looks. It's so cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. The glass, it's, the glass beach home is where combo. Finally, what the world's been waiting for. Truly. Or at least, um, uh, a bunch of emo kids. Yeah. A bunch of emo kids. <laughs> A bunch of e emo kids and Ian Cohen. He's he's still an emo kid at heart. You sure, know? you can't. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything you want to talk about, really quick, before we jump into this? I I got nothing on my mind. I think you know. Um, I just think it's cool. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, the Harmony Woods episodes was sick, and um, I just hope everybody has a good time. I hope you know. If you're in the chat and you haven't listened to this record before and you're just here for, for, cause you're a glass speech stand, then, you know, I hope, I hope you like the record. And if you don't, that's, that's your right. You're wrong, but it's your right. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to Spotify or the green music oh, app. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to my media player as well. So, all right. It's going to do a weird thing, but that's okay. Okay. Hold on. I got to do this really quick. Take your time. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Here we go. This is going to oh, be it. I'm about to do the countdown. This is I Became Birds by Home Is Where. It's 18 minutes long. Six songs. The first song is L. Ron Hubbard Was Way Cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be saying the song titles. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. By all means. Yeah. Okay. I can't wait till you have to crap out the third one. Yeah. 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 It'll be good. Okay. Everybody has their, this is your last chance to get your streaming service platform or whatever pulled up. I hope you've pulled up the album. I became birds by home is where, cause here we go. Remember, Hit play when I say go after the countdown. Mm. All right. Three, two, one, go.
All right. <laughs> I haven't listened to this in a long time. This is um, this song has two. I gotta lower it. I know I'm more, I can already feel myself shouting. Um, <laughs> this is the song where I blatantly rip off Tim Kinsella twice with the um, "More Water Than Human" when he says uh, we're really mostly just water. It was like directly ripping that off. And um, the past is never ending. He's got a lyric in Joan of Arc where it's like the past won't stop happening or something like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just yeah. going to twist him a little bit. Yeah. And and the song title comes from a King Missile uh, song. Jesus was way cool. Uh, I like I like King Missile a whole lot. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, that was a lot of information right at the beginning there. I have no life. This is all I think about is emo stuff and, and, and my girlfriend. That's it. This is all I, this is all I know. This is a great opener, by the way. I really love it. I was really nervous. That would be a little too low key, but once we got the horns in, which took forever to find somebody to play horns with us, but West Meadows from many, many bands, but, uh, I love their work and I hope so. And they run flower pot records and they were kind enough to, help us out because we were just going to give up on horns because through no fault of anybody's um, every horn player just had something come up where they couldn't do it. And um, Wes was a sweetheart and they, they gunned it out and they did it perfectly. I didn't need to ask them to redo anything. They would, wow. Yeah. Uh, this is the second song long distance conjoined twins. This is my least favorite song to play live because it takes so much breath to keep up with the cadence of the song. It is like, and I, plus when we play live, I go a little, uh, I get a little crazy. So when I'm moving around and stuff, I'm like, <gasps> like trying so hard to like, like, like shit out these words and it's painful. And so we try to, we made it a thing to either have this be the first or second song every set. So I'm not too tired because we've had it be the last, like second to last song or like third to last. And I'm too tired to like make it sound good. Yeah. There, there's a lot of that. Uh, Jay also like we have songs for me if, and for Jay like drums and vocals that just can't be back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Or they can't be like the last song in the set or like that kind of thing. I want to see neon glow live so bad that it like it physically hurts some days. Uh, well, if you'll settle for a live stream, you should tune in tomorrow to the alternatives live stream. Oh, I might, I just might surprise surprise. <laughs> This is probably my most far out lyric where I Alter Boys say. curse on the mall Santa Claus. But I wrote that just so I can have a reference for the oh what a strange salvation part. That was a filler line. That was supposed to be a harmonica, like just like for the recording, but I could just like playing like singing it a lot. So we just kept the da da da's and the and we have a millennial woe in here, which I didn't realize until the album came out. Uh, what? It's like, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah I didn't yeah. even think about it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this this song particularly, well, I think you have kind of a stream of consciousness way of writing. This song particularly, like, feels very much. You say that? And I get that a lot, but it's all super mathematical. Yeah, Like, yes. it's all really, like... Like I went in, like I had like knew I needed to mention birds at some point in the song. So there's birds on telephone lines and, and you know, other stuff that relates to, cause it's a concept album. Like it tells a really loose story. Um, sorry, <laughs> I, I like that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So like the story is like, so it's not like a rock opera, like the wall or anything where it's like the entire story where it's like, I wanted to write like just the details of a story. And the story is, um, a pair of conjoined twins born into Scientology were separated at birth only to escape the church to sew themselves back together before the end of the world and, and go out together. <laughs> Damn. And this is all a metaphor for gender. Yes. So. Yep. <laughs> wow. I love playing this on harmonica. As much as a pain in the butt it is to sing, this is like my favorite harmonica song we got. Yeah. The the harmonica on the whole record, by the way, is is just outstanding. I really, really love it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, both harmonica like guitar is like 
the first couple of listens through of, of your record, I I didn't really super notice like riffs. I wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh, when I think of this record, I think of riffs. But yeah. the more I listened to it, the more I was like, damn, look at all these riffs. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was, um, oh, here's the song. This is the only part of the album that has a saw on it, which was, uh, we tried really hard to work the saw into assisted harakiri and the old country, but it just didn't fit. And so oh, yeah, we're going to be yeah. a little bit more saw conscious. Uh, and this one is the third song sewn together from the membrane of the great sea cucumber. It's an Ed and Eddie reference. Oh my god! Yeah, because I, well, originally I wanted to tell the story of Rolf, like make a like 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 directly rip off the Brave Little Abacus demo and like sample like a bunch of clips from Ed and Eddie and just tell like the story of Rolf, like missing home, like just feeling like fish out of water kind of story. And then I had like a little bit of a mental breakdown and, um, and then I was like, I need to write about this gender stuff that I've been ignoring for my, literally my entire life or I'm going to lose my mind. And, um, and yeah. And then, you know, this is the part of the album that has everybody's favorite part in it with the dogs. Um, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) If it makes you feel better, I, I also love it, but it's not my favorite part. <laughs> oh, um, don't tell me what, when it happens. Let me know what your favorite part is. Oh, okay, cool. Think, um, this part was really fun. We got all of our buddies and we got the band, our girlfriends and our producer and the violin player all to sing this and they just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I remember when Matt sent this to me and like, I was like kind of like passively listening to it. Cause I was like, Oh yeah, okay. Sounds good. And then this part came on. And it was like the only time I've ever gotten goosebumps from my own music. And I was like, Oh the shit. Only it's time? Mostly because it's all my friends are singing it. Yeah. You know, I'm used to these songs. We practice, practiced them like crazy. I... So it's like, they're not too surprising. Um, we're, we're about to get to, yep. Here's my favorite part. Oh, the screamo part. <laughs> well, this, this riff, like the lead right. into the screamo part. Hell yeah. That's yeah. so cool. I really love that part. Just that like ascending riff. If you like this part, you'll love. Is that your smoke detector? I think, yeah, my, my building has the worst smoke alarm system. <laughs> it goes off. <laughs> it goes off like every week. It's, it is, it's tolling. Yeah, but yeah, if you like the screamo part, you'll love the the new songs we're working on right now. Uh, wink, wink. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. We're, gonna pull, we're, we're pulling a hazing over for for one release. We're switching from emo to hardcore. Wow. Yeah, I did, that's why I was running a little bit late. It was because we had band practice today, and we got really into a songwriting session working on the two songs we got right now, and they're coming out really tight. Hell yeah. No, I'm very excited. I mean, I suppose I the smoke detector was part of the song for a second. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit! Did we leave something in there nobody told me about?" <laughs> with uh, <laughs> with this uh, with this record like being as short as it is, is this mm-hmm. something that like you're all gonna settle on? Oh, I'm gonna be quiet for a second. Yeah, that come down is awesome. Thank you. Also, your voice is just incredible on every part of this record. <laughs> I took the longest to get my sh- stuff done because I'm very, very self-critical. Because I know I don't have like a great singing voice or whatever, but I'm just like, you know, I, we did like easily. Like, there's just some stuff that went through a good amount of takes, like maybe too many takes. You know, I was just overthinking it. I have that bad habit. Uh-huh. Same thing with harmonica. I can play harmonica live and at practice like it's like it's nothing. But as soon as I get in front of the microphone when I'm just recording, I'm just I'm just the queen of fuck ups. <laughs> I'm pretty similar as well. Whether it's singing, playing guitar, playing guitar is the worst. Playing guitar is the worst. I, I don't know how to play guitar, so I don't got to worry about it. I did write guitar the guitar melody for Long Twins and the song that's about to come on. And that would be uh, the scientific classification of stingrays. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the hell was I about to say? 
Oh yeah. Well, I was going to say for how like short this album is, is this something you, y'all are planning on like sitting on for a little while before? I mean, I don't know. Do you think you would be a band that would release music within the same year? Like, I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> no, no, that's fair. I, I just, I, I wonder partly like how long it takes you to. It took us two years to write these songs. Yeah. Um, you are correct. Chill wave. This was the first single. And this is our fun fact for today from chill wave. <laughs> um, yeah, this song, this, when this song came out, it pretty much, I am very proud of my screaming on this song. This is probably my favorite screaming on the whole record, probably of our whole like discography is like, this is the song I could probably listen to the easiest. Well, maybe it when it, like harsher songs. Yeah. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Do you remember what I was saying before I complimented myself like an asshole? No. <laughs> nice all right no don't okay. no worries well that's the point of, that's the point of having you on don't worry you're supposed to compliment oh. yourself like an asshole <laughs> <laughs> this song is really fun to play live and so um, joe's snare on this record like matt got his snare to sound so fucking good like it blows my mind every time i listen to it like just the snare alone like what matt is like literal genius i don't know how he does it like but he's been doing it for forever i guess so I'm, that's just one of those things yeah i'm i it, this i mean it is a, an immaculately produced record just all around that was like a very conscious decision because our first i don't know if you listen to our first ep or our only ep technically yeah um but it's you know it's pretty rough around the edges and I, like that I, was yeah i listened to a bit of it yeah yeah, we didn't play to a click track, you know. This, oh, I've been this there. one, we, we made it a point to play to a click. And yeah. this is everybody's favorite song. Um. Oh yeah, I suppose this is this one is the fifth track, assisted Harikari. Um, yeah, this is the song that's like most like to me. I to me like it's most like in your face. This song this is about being trans. Like I don't like when I started writing this song, like I had to stop writing it for a second and just go, oh my God, the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> this, this riff right here. Mm-hmm. Is it, it's like an, it's like octaves for a while. And then just, did you write I, that? I believe, I believe you. I did not write this. No, no. I wrote, uh, I wrote uh, long distance conjoined twins and, um, that guitar part and then i wrote the guitar part for stingrays other than that okay. like because they're just one of them stingrays is just one chord pretty much and then twins is two that's all i can do i don't know i, I can't play real instruments i can only play a saw and a harmonica and like kazoos and stuff so oh, um i remembered the uh two things this is from earlier this is gonna be a weird album commentary but like the singing saw okay. from the um from earlier <laughs> for the for the song that does mention like i like i want to pet every puppy i see uh is it intentionally like supposed to sound like howling like dogs howling yeah okay yeah i figured i don't know <laughs> no it's a good you're the first person to point that out oh cool so. <laughs> good <laughs> also this is my second favorite part of my album yeah, I like this part. This is probably my, like my favorite song to play live. You now I'm talking about playing live a lot just because I want to do it so bad. <laughs> it's oh, such a good problem. vocal performance. It's so good. I have a bad uh, tobacco habit. So when we recorded, I purposely, and then the synth comes in. Oh, I fucking love this shit. But um, I purposely was very irritable because I wanted my voice to be as good as possible. And then the minute we got all my vocal tracks done, I was just Tom waits out like outside in, in Matt's driveway. Like it was bad. <laughs> uh, don't smoke anyone. <laughs> yeah. Do not smoke. Don't do anything. Be straight edge. Straight edge. Kids are cool. I am. I, don't give a shit. I believe. Yeah. I respect it wholeheartedly. I, tr- I was for a long time and then you know, I lost faith. Oh no. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, um, I mean, I'm sure everybody talks about the cops are flammable line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gotten me on a list in my hometown um, with the sheriff's department. So, yep. very fun. Uh, good line. My favorite part about it, 
is just that you you yell it and then just go ah woo like the ah woo <laughs> like the, the sweet little harmony like the 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 falsetto like ah woo yeah it was a nice little juxtaposition yeah we got a lot of I became birds in the chat right now I love albums that have the album title in the lyrics, but not in the song titles, like, like divorce lawyers. I shaved my head or, um, uh, just a ton. There's a ton. I can't, but that's what I'm directly ripping off is Jordan Mason, Jordan Mason. Yeah. This is like a perfect lyric when I was in high school. You wrote it when you were in high school. The, the I wrote, lyric, like a Bible in a hotel drawer in high school, and then the old country, the song that's about to come on. I wrote that. I started writing that in 2012, around this time in 20, spring of 2012, and then worked on it up until probably like yeah, right until we started like practicing it, and it was originally like 20 stanzas long, no coherence whatsoever, and then like the like the fellas in the band just looked at me and they were like. We love you. This is probably really cool. We can't work with this. And I was like, okay, I'll gut it. I'll gut it to like what I thought was the essential bit. And then it turned out to be, I think, isn't it? I think it's the shortest song on the record. I have it in a different window. I'm not opening it up again. So I'm just going to say it's the shortest song on the record. And then it's my favorite song on the record. Like the one, like, I love this. I love the old country. Because yeah. it sounds a lot like Bob Dylan. <laughs> uh, L. Ron Hubbard was way cool is shorter than the old country. Damn. And no now I own your album <laughs> because you were wrong. And I'm not... It's fine. Keep it by all means. We're on the, we're on the new stuff. Yeah. This song's amazing. So I, yeah. So, I mean, it changed a lot since high school. Like it's not the exact same lyrics other than the last line of the record is something I wrote um, when I was, I think I was 18 and it was in a very, very rough place. Yeah, I really like that little like walk up in the guitar as well. Doom, yeah, that's, doom, all, doom. that's all Trace. That's just Trace being the musical genius he is. And I don't even, I genuinely mean that dude is nuts. And Connor's bass on here is like the bass melody at the end just gets me every time. It's crazy. Like I'll see, like I'll check my Spotify in the morning and see that people are listening to it at like 6 a.m. And then I see like people posting about how their day started off bad. And it's like, you listen to a sad record. <laughs> 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 Pick something a little bit more lighthearted, but I don't know. This record's like devastating to me, but a bunch of people say it's like a lot of fun and like they get a lot of joy out of it, which is cool. But for me, it's like, it's fucking heavy. Like, uh, I, like, I am one of the, um, it kind of amps me up. A little bit. I I don't I don't find it inherently like devastating in any. It's probably just because I'm real close to it. Oh yeah. So, that was a whole album. Don't that let was anybody tell me otherwise. Album. Yeah. One yeah, more was... time. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay. Well, great. That was uh, I became birds by Home Is Where. So. Uh, the one thing I did want to say was uh, your penultimate song. The I mean the this is I would say like a perfect layout of the album. Mm-hmm. You did a great job of the on the track list because mm-hmm. I could not imagine this being in a different order. No, neither could we. Um, yeah, it was a very like we like. I don't remember what songs came first, but we knew like from the get go like how like when we had the songs, like where other songs would fit in and what kind of like mood they would be because we wanted it. Our original plan was to pull a brave little abacus and like have it like loop to the beginning and have like it be a perfect loop over and over and over again. But, um, I mean, obviously that didn't happen. I wanted to fade out because, um, I love, I love like sentimental fade outs where it's like something really sweet and like, you know, like something like, I don't know, like the self-titled velvet underground record without Nico, like the one, like the, I don't know. 
they have a bunch of really sweet songs that have cute little fade outs that just make me go cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's great. I, it's funny. Yeah, there's. I know I said this to you in the pre before like we went live on stream, but uh, there are a lot of pieces of the way that you talk about music that are really similar to the way that Jay uh, talks about music, whether it's like ideas or like, you know, a fondness or, or like an encyclopedic knowledge of kind of the scene and um, uh, just a ton of like artists and, and music. Uh, Cause I mean, there have been conversations that glass beach has had about, you know, uh, I mean, we've talked about like writing an album that can that loops indefinitely, like as well, and and going and uh, I mean, like Jay has referenced Brave Little Abacus as uh, inspiration for a lot of a lot of like the pieces of what we do, and that's cool. Yeah, yeah that and you know, is it one of those things that gets kind of annoying when you guys get compared to to the Brave Little Abacus a lot? Because I see that conversation and comes up in conversation quite a bit. No, no, I don't. Sweet. Yeah, I don't. I don't know any comparison that any of us don't like, except for like jokingly, joke, jokingly Weezer maybe. Like as a joke, we don't like being compared to Weezer, but um, I don't hear that at all. Yeah, I'll we only listen to the first two Weezer records, so that might be it. And maybe there's like some weird. I believe it's Pinkerton. We're we're Pinkerton for um, people with pick crew icons. I believe or profile <laughs> pictures is that is what is the is the bit. Um, <laughs> uh, but oh, yeah, I really I, I don't think any of us mind, and in fact, are kind of like flattered by comparisons to the Brave Little Abacus. Or I mean, really, really like. I can almost guarantee if you think we sound like someone, it is like a, uh, an inspiration or someone that like Jay has like pulled from in some way. For me, it was the it. Beach Boys. Like y'all reminded me of yes. the smile session. Oh my god! They're not even pet sounds. Like the smile you session. Need, pet sounds is a little. Cold, I need to hook but... you up with Jay. You two need to talk because it. it's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's the our way- approach was we wanted to make like a Fugazi only had acoustic guitars, but wanted to make pet sounds. That was the idea for I Became Birds. So Nick, our next record, like our next full album is going to be our smile. And I'm going to lose my mind during it. Uh, building's going to burn. I'm going to abandon the project. And 30 years later, I'm going to release it as a compilation, just like they did with Smile. <laughs> good plan. It's good to have like long-term goals. Yeah. Uh, yeah so i mean that's that that's the end of that i will we'll we'll be chatting for a little while and brandon's gonna show me um another album so if you if you all want to stick around i'll be hearing this album for the first time but it's it's an album that brandon likes and wanted to share with me Uh, underrated an underrated album it's an older one too it's not like 1972 yeah most of the stuff that i've been doing i mean just by happenstance the stuff that I've been wanting to cover is stuff that I've found in the past couple of years that I really mm-hmm. love. I mean, cause like other ones that I want to do are, um, I want to do brat by Namdi and I want to do, give I, her- love that yeah. I love that album. I love, so I love not. Is- yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I want to do brat. I want to do give or taker by and Um, uh, yes. I want to do something from pom pom squad probably the 2019 release i can't remember the name of it right now but yeah i mean like it's just because like uh i've gotten aggressively more into listening to music in the past few years than i had any time beforehand so Mm -hmm. that's just what i'm pulling from for the most part but i mean like i don't know if we want to bring is it jim croach jim croachy do you know how to pronounce Mm -hmm. that croachy yeah croachy because i my dad spun his records for me a ton when I was younger and I've always I have a huge soft spot for Jim Croce. I do too. That music's super cozy. This is a little bit like Jim Croce. It's a little bit more uh, out there. A little bit more out there but it's um, yeah I really like this record. My background's in dad rock. Like I came when I got into me when I got into music I got into like the Rolling the original Rolling Stone like 500 greatest albums of all time and stuff. I mean which now you know no like getting into, you know, like, like punk and stuff and D and like emo and like even other stuff like outside of DIY, like it's like that list is pretty cringe, but 
it, you know, <laughs> it shaped, <laughs> it shaped a lot of my music taste. And, uh, um, so I do have like a soft spot for like unapologetic dad rock. I don't even know what an unapologetic dad rock means. Yeah. Um, but you know, I just like old music. Like that's where the only contemporary music I really like is, uh, emo, uh, fifth wave emo to be specific. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and like, you know, like hardcore and like black metal, like extreme, like, like bull crap. Um, but when it comes to like straightforward, like rock and roll or like folk rock or any kind of that, I go, I'm not interested in what's coming out now and go, go back into the past yeah, you know, interesting. Like production stuff, I guess. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, also oh, something, something I wanted to ask you, how do you guys feel about fifth wave? Like the idea of it, like, uh, being it, like, well, me pretty saying it over and over again. Yeah. That you're fifth wave. Yeah. There's, uh, I, I don't have like strong feelings. I know that Jay, uh, in, in essence is like whatever, but like is always kind of of the mind of like, are we, emo like necessarily and i I, whereas like whereas they're questioning like i don't know if we're emo but like if people want to classify us like that like whatever helps them to like be more invested in the music or find other artists that they like or like that kind of thing whatever and then my take on is that like i i you'd be hard pressed to like show me an album that i don't think is kind of emo like (laughs) (laughs) and that's sort of where i am um uh, You're listening to like 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 bitches brew by Miles Davis. Oh yeah, <laughs> damn. Yeah. This, yeah, this is me in here. Yeah, I mean, like I know, yeah, because we were talking about it coming from uh, the term being like emotional hardcore and everything. So it's like not, I mean, in a literal sense, not everything can be emo, but uh, mm-hmm. in in more of like a spiritual sense, I do find a lot, a lot of a lot of the the music that. Uh, people wouldn't consider emo to be like, yeah, sure, why not? That's sort of my <laughs> position on. It. I don't mind That's the cool. fifth wave emo discussion. That the people complain about the discourse or whatever. They're like, ah, oh, the, all of this silly discourse. I'm just like, I don't know. It's just kind of fun. <laughs> like, why not? That's just a. That's like a just a long way of saying you're a poser. It's complaining about the fifth wave emo. Just I'm <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, whatever, yeah whatever I know. You're like, yeah, it. everyone. Yeah, fuck you and. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think fifth wave is fun. I yeah, that's all it's meant to be. Is to be. I just wanted to help make a community because we're all painfully online right now. You know, we can't hang out. You know, we can't go tour and, and like actually support each other. So I just make lists, um, encapsulating everybody on just a umbrella term that means really nothing. Honestly, it's yeah. just fun. Yeah, you know? and I like your people lists. take it way too seriously. Yes, I try. I, I agree. I like your list a lot because like one, I mean, it shows that you really do care about music and like the scene and your peers. Mm-hmm. And two, you, you care about letting other people know about these artists and musicians that people might not have found otherwise. Like I have found, I have found a few bands uh, from your lists that I'm just like, Oh, yeah. I've never heard of that it. band. Yeah. It's the whole point of them. You know, I don't, I don't like the idea of like, there are like staple heads, like with the revival, you know, you had like Algernon, like snowing, like the world is. And there were like these like five or six bands that were super big. And then everybody else was like, I don't know if it was like regional, but like they get a little bit of buzz and then, you know, not really too much, anything else, but like you go back and there's like some like lost masterpieces in there, like a band, like, like family might or, um, um, D- Dariv, I'm not sure how you pronounce their name, but they're like a really out there avant-garde kind of emo thing. That's like, like insane, like absolutely insane. So it's like, yeah, you know, I just want to help. I want to make sure that people's really good music is heard by people who might appreciate it. Damn, I appreciate that. I appreciate that you do that. <laughs> like, actually, I mean, I think I think it's a cool way to have fun and show people off to new people knife punch is here what yeah, knife, punch? knife punch knife punch is hello <laughs> hi hi knife punch i almost wear forever says knife punch uh i believe yeah we got a bunch Waiting of people i did i posted a, a modern baseball uh takes today on my twitter you should go follow me on twitter and then after that you should buy my music on Bandcamp for a lot of money Yes. Yeah. Now that we've uh-huh. listened to it, I, to exclamation point, listen in the chat. You can go to the Home Is Where Bandcamp, and uh, if you, if it's your taste and you have the means, I encourage you to purchase the record. Uh, I what was I literally? Oh yeah, yeah. 
so I saw your um, your modern baseball modern. Uh, tweet. Do you not like modern baseball? I hate modern baseball. I hate it with a passion. That is that is like like that is Weezer to me. Like that like all the things people don't like about Weezer, which I also don't like Weezer for, is like cranked to eleven for modern baseball for me. It just never clicked. Um, I hate it. I just hate it. I think, yeah, I'm sorry. You Do know? you get comparisons then to modern baseball? No, we get comparisons to the front bottoms, which is another band. I don't have <laughs> any feelings for at all. And we oh, get, no. com- <laughs> yeah, I don't like the front bottoms at all. Um, we do get compared to the brave little abacus sometimes, which I don't hear it, but I'm very flattered by it. Sure. And then, um, you know, we get like Neutral Milk Hotel and uh, Captain Jazz every now and then, which are my two favorite bands. So I'll, I'll welcome those. And then we get compared to uh, some bands I don't I don't even want to mention that just like it like it bothers me that like th- that those words are coming out of your mouth. Like, ah, just stop. Let's just forget about them. Don't I mean, I, w- I would assume you get compared a lot to like folk punk bands or something because I, yeah. I, I people are like desperate yeah. to to qualify you as a folk band. It's really weird because like. Like folk punk is its own. Like we just happen to be a punk band that is heavily influenced by folk, but folk punk is its own thing. Like yeah. you know, like it's got its own tropes and like just its own thing going on. And that's not us, you know. If we were doing that, you know, I wouldn't shy it off away so easy. But I'm just I'm making it real simple for you. We're just emo. We're, yeah. You know, <laughs> we're nothing else. You know, like we have other tags on there just to make it you know a little bit easier. But you know, like if you want to call us post hardcore or Somebody called us folk core, which I thought was pretty funny. I'll take that. I'll take folk core over folk punk any day. Folk core. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, like, I don't know. It's just weird. I think it's just, like, I don't know what's going on. I never got into folk punk. The only band I know is uh, AJJ. That's it. And I haven't listened to them since high school. Do you, so it's like, do you get compared to them? No. Oh, thank goodness. No, I, had, I, I really I like AJJ, it. but I do not. Yeah, really, yeah, I would not hear that. And Yeah, I like AJJ, like now still i mean i still very much listen to them so uh i haven't listened to anything after uh knife man which not because i don't like them or anything or like because i of any i just haven't had time no 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 i mean it. yeah you're listening to so much music and like there's i don't know conversations we've had around the house uh glass beach and everything is you know sometimes it feels a little overwhelming how much music is out there and so you go to like some comfort albums that you know that you like and then um yeah definitely spend some time finding some new stuff but not not i mean because like right now for example um there are three new releases that i'm trying to listen to i need to listen to the new rosie tucker uh, i need to finish listening to the new origami angel and uh hey i love you Oh my God. I love, Hey, I love you so much. It is like, Caleb is one of my best friends. Like he's also in the band rookie card that I love and they really like y'all too. So like, I mean, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Caleb. so Caleb's amazing. And everybody in rookie card is amazing. Yeah. Caleb's a literal genius. Like he put out two of the, my favorite pieces of music just months apart from each other this year. I will, yeah. I would die for Caleb. Like I would, I would go, I would I would do whatever it takes for Caleb to be happy. <laughs> I mean, see, this is this is what I like though, because like, um, I in the past year with the pandemic and everything, I've been getting I'm following a lot more artists in our community. But because like, Glass Beach didn't really play shows out in LA, so we we haven't like we didn't like bond with like Cheek Face, Illuminati Hotties, Rap Boys, like any of those like the LA based bands. Um, we didn't really like we just haven't been in the scene here. Uh, and we spent three years, like three and a half, maybe four years writing and recording the record in like isolation and working like 40, 40 plus hours a week at like our, our day jobs and stuff as well. So like going through all of that, coming out, releasing a record and having it do as well as it has and kind of like shove us into the scene just out of nowhere, like a seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, I felt like glass beach was really disconnected from everybody because even though we had all these like inspirations and people that we adore and like other artists that we like, I felt like nobody knew who we were, even though we'd been here for like years. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I felt like we didn't really know the people who were like smaller and just like, you know, doing a full like DIY us tour and a bunch of people like go to show up to their shows, but they don't have like a lot of Spotify numbers or some shit like that, you know? 
So like I felt really disconnected. So during the pandemic, I was like, this is a good opportunity to just start reaching out to people and like following bands and like supporting people and retweeting and like, you know, trying to make lists of stuff for other people. And like, I've made like a bunch of threads and whatever. Cause I run the glass beach account, uh, on Twitter and okay. yeah. And like the best thing that has come out of it is that I fi- I'm finding all this like really remarkable music and it's from like peer of 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 yeah. peer of peer. Cause like I'll follow, like, I, I mean, I don't even remember how I've, found you no it was literally knife punch sending you to me is how i found you uh but like finding you or like dog leg and then i'll see something that you or dog leg has retweeted or liked mm-hmm. on my twitter and i'll go oh i check this out and then i like that and then i follow that person and i see the stuff so like i uh, it's very exciting to me because I, I said this to harmony woods like to sophia last week like sophia's record is one of my favorite ones that i found recently and i wouldn't mm-hmm. have found it I don't think if Bartise hadn't been the one who produced it. Cause I just yeah. like, I'd already known Bartise and everything. And it's just very cool how willing people are to share other people's music with each other and their, whether it's their friends or like their peers and like how connected our community is. And I, I don't oh, find yeah. it like, I don't find it like incestuous or anything like in the sense like I don't think it's funny either. I think everybody genuinely gives a shit about what they're talking about too. It's not like, Oh, I'm reblogging you because you got like, you know, a stereo gum post or anything. So now, you know, get my foot in the door with you. It's like, I think everybody really cares about what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a family. It is. I think so, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I, do. I, I really do. Uh, that's why I'm a, I'm a dork. <laughs> okay. All right. No. Do we want to listen to this other album? Sure. I actually, funny enough, I was gonna re- like because I didn't know you were gonna have Harmony Woods on. I was gonna recommend her new album, and then you announced that they were that she was coming oh. on, and I was like, <laughs> ah, shit. And then I wanted to listen to your arms in my cocoon their ep but i figured that was too short so i was like i don't know if you wanted to like make it go longer so i was like let me just pick like an underrated like old album for for younger people to get into that's pretty sick yeah i'm i honestly i'm you strike me as someone who likes fleetwood mac do you like fleetwood mac i have actually never listened to a full fleetwood mac album Oh, okay well i mean it's not just hype rumors is very good it's not just hype. Uh, I got into them a little bit in college, um, just because a, a partner of mine loved Fleetwood Mac and listened to it a lot. And I was just happened to be around. I, uh, I haven't actually like fully appreciated them until probably this past year, but like, that's like, they had, like yeah. a popular meme going around with the dude drinking the juice on the skateboard or something. Oh yeah. You know what I'm about? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, just drinking the juice, just drinking the juice. I gotta pull up my Spotify now. What's the what's the name of the record? Uh, I always like dyslexic. Uh, time of the last persecution. Time. Whoops. <laughs> time of. The last persecution. I feel like when I'm like old, like when I'm like 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 a little bit past middle age, like this is the kind of music I'm gonna probably. If I still want to make music, gee, if we're even able, if we're alive, if we're even here, uh, if I make it to forty, um, yeah, this is probably the the like the direction i'd like to go in because it can't, i can't be screaming up until then you know because once you you know once you're an old guy in hardcore you play tompkins park during the middle of a pandemic and it's just all kinds of trouble comes from that <laughs> um uh, classic john in in the chat did say that i should get hey i love you on on here you i yeah i would i would yeah them and like like i said like your arms are my cocoon them they're just like those, those are my buddies all of those guys they're not like it's just it's not even like i just genuinely love their music like we became buddies after i heard their album and we got our own little 
<laughs> like a little discord where we just talk and like, just, you know, just do whatever. And we'll just, just goof off, make fart noises. Oh, I see somebody mentioned lobster fight. Lobster fight also rules. Yeah. Shout out lobster fight. Put out some really great music so far. I, is everybody just posting links? Everybody to, just, just tell the, us, just tell us your favorite fifth wave bands. Just, just, yeah, just the put them out there. Put them in the chat. <laughs> Let me know if I missed any. I have listened to every email record ever made, ever made, but you know, something could have dropped 10 minutes ago. I didn't know about, so we'll find out. <laughs> um, all right. So last chance here. This is time of the last persecution. We're going to do a countdown again, hit play on go. Uh, and we're just kind of going to be vibing. We can just like chat the whole time because this will yeah. be, yeah. It'll be some cool parts. Like, I've, you know, but you know, other than that, it's like a really laid back record. Uh, it's kind of heavy at certain points, like, like lyrically, lyrically. But, you know, there's, yeah. there's nothing, you know, to, there's like some weird augment jazz. Oh, who is the guitar player on this album that I really like? <laughs> They're really, of course, my thing is acting funny now. If you crash on me again, I swear to God. <laughs> uh while you're looking that up i just want to say that on on the green music app the the album cover cover for this mm-hmm. uh i think memes have poisoned my brain because it just looks like a, a meme format like- <laughs> <laughs> it does <laughs> oh shit yeah it really does that is yeah i never put ray russell ray russell plays guitar on this record amazing guitarist i suppose we should get to it then so we can have a little time to chat at the end yeah, absolutely just give me one sec because now my my thing is you're good being douchey. kind of douchey it's all good there we are okay swag <laughs> uh, nice. Okay. Cool. I. Yep. It's all. I'm. I'm ready when you are. Okay. Three, two, one, go. This first song is Omega Day. Yeah, this album, like, he talks a lot about um, running into Jesus or, like, or like being Jesus in the in his in his time, you know, like, in 71, like, so and it's, like, and it's very, like, he's got, like, a lot of, like, um, British cultural references, like, like, I think the song, like, is about, like, seeing Jesus, like, in a pub and it's just, and, like, he asks him, what's up? And then Jesus is, like, nothing later. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I just think it's beautiful. He says my crown. This is just like one of those good, like unwind kind of albums. You know, like it's the end of the day. Like it's like I feel like if like if I have like nothing to do, I have no responsibilities. I have like because I work nights, so my girlfriend works days, so like she's asleep. I have like nobody to talk to or nothing. I'll just put this on and just just like. Uh, <laughs> just for, when do you two see each other then um in between us going to sleep sure Damn. yeah like her waking up her waking up and then me coming home from work like well, we have a couple hours to hang out and then um and then you know the weekends like i stay up a little late because i, I work at a school so i get weekends and, and holidays off and stuff so um oh, okay yeah so we have like like summer break and winter break and all that stuff to hang out with um each other so yeah it's it's hard i won't lie it's I, yeah. butt, but uh we make it work damn oh the horns on this album too so good i'm just i'm a sucker for horns like my number one advice is like if you're in a band and you're just like a rock quartet like maybe you have two guitars or like you just have one guitar bass and drums just think about layers like when you're making your album think about a piano or like horns or just just add something in there. It doesn't even have to be throughout the entire song. Just put in like a little bit of something there. 
Just listen to this. This is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like the horns on this. I just got this uh, this the, a record of this recently, and it was a little it was a little pricey, but oh, so worth it. It sounds so good on wax. I don't like being one of those people or nothing, but you know, like when you make something analog, and then you you know you play it on analog system, it does make it like it does and it makes a difference. You know, I was pretty hesitant to putting our record on vinyl because uh, of that because I was like, it's not going to it's just going to be a, a product. You know, it's not going to add anything to it, but. Uh, we did we did like a we have a little mastering stuff to where um more stuff will pop out. Yeah. On the vinyl when that comes out. So that'll be cool. Big announcement soon. Big announcement. <laughs> yeah. Is is the vinyl gonna be orange? <laughs> I'll never tell. No, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell when, when when I have the okay. I'm sure my no, management I'll stop is asking. Right I'll now. stop asking sure questions like that. Like, stop talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to pry like that. I know. I, yeah, I know how it can be. Like, yeah, you gotta keep that stuff under wraps. Yeah. Like, for the hype. somebody mentioned, really, From's new album, and uh, I agree. Really, From is very good. I remember when they were people like you, and then they changed their name. Very good band. <laughs> uh, someone mentioned Camp Camp Trash. They're cool. They're from Florida. They're on Count Your Lucky Stars. Yeah, I've met Keegan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Keegan has written about us, I think. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, Keegan's Keegan's real nice. They got they got some hot takes, but they're um, you know, yeah. they're they're a nice person, real nice person. I mean, who does it? I got some hot takes. I got I got so many. Just let me unload them right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a perfect backdrop for you to release your hot takes <laughs> with this album going on. I can I I can I say something that that might be infuriating? Oh sure, go ahead. Not I I hear like do you hear a front bottoms influence on this song? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's got I, an acoustic guitar. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say Josh Tillman, Father John Josh. Misty. Oh okay. Okay, I haven't. I've actually listened. I think I listened to their first record. I don't know. I liked Flea Foxes when they were a thing. Sure, uh, they're, they're new. They've made new music though, right? Yeah, I haven't listened to anything after Helplessness Blues. Yeah, they did um, some something Honey Bear, and then something else. Uh, co- comedy, some comedy, it's comedy, something. I can't remember. Comedy they, Central. Yeah, Comedy Central. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm one of the rare people who actually likes Father John Misty. <laughs> you know, I don't, uh, he looks like Bill Fay. Like he looks like the dude on the album. Oh, cover sure. Here. I'm sure that's, I'm sure there's like an influence there directly or indirect. Yeah. Oh, the piano for this song is so good. And like the drums are just so quaint. <laughs> you gotta love hard panning Wait, so instruments the, yeah the stereo back in the day was crazy like <laughs> listening to original Be- Beatles because I have my dad's original Beatles records that are probably worth a few a pretty penny yeah. they sound terrible yeah. It sounds so bad with this stereo. <laughs> it's great. The guitar line that comes in here is oh, Chef's Kiss. That tone is just so smooth. It is. And the kick sounds nice too. It's like a little filtered. I think I don't know. I don't know what they did to it, but it's really soft. Yeah, I really like the ride too. I think he got all all jazz musicians because the the guitarist I said earlier, whose name I literally just forgot, um, is a pretty well respected in the jazz scene back in the day. Like I really really love jazz. Like I don't know music theory. I just know that it sounds awesome. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm the I'm the one in the band who knows the least music theory wise. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say I say weird descriptors like like just make it sound like ah, you know, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Or like I'll describe like colors or like, or I'll just do like the basic thing where it's like, do something like this and I'll just play, usually Fugazi. I'll just make it sound like this. Yes. When Jonas and I were in a band together in college, we, we recorded our, we, we recorded an, an album, um, coincidentally without a click because nice. our, dr- our drummer at the time refused to play to a click. Cause I, he just didn't know how he couldn't. Um, oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was like, I'm too good for a click. No, no, it was, I mean, it, ostensibly it was the opposite. He was a great drummer though. Um, really, really like heavy hitter, but it, it just sounded so good. Um, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't record to a click. And um, back then I knew even less music theory or like stuff than I did now. And it was funny cause we'd be in the studio with a, a local dude who just like recorded people for super cheap mm-hmm. and we'd be like hey can you make it like less stingy can you, you see make i guitar... know exactly what you're talking about though can you, you make the guitar less like, stingy <laughs> turn a couple knobs diddle a few dials yeah i know exactly what you're talking about this is one of my favorite songs on the record don't smoke kids it was 71 they only knew for 10 years, I think, after the big fact came out, like the investigations they did. I'm, I'm using Mad Men as a historical reference because I remember the first season takes place during 1961, and that's when they had that weird, not weird, the very necessary surgeon health warning on cigarettes and all that controversy and stuff. Literally, the vocals sound the same as Father John Misty, and it's like, and the compositions are really like similar as well. I'm... I think this is waking me up to a big like Josh Tillman inspiration. I would, I don't know. I, 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 at this point, I'd almost be surprised if if Josh Tillman didn't know this record or Bill Fay. Yeah, because he like his the album uh, that came out before this one is self titled. It's also pretty popular. I think that's like more regarded as this one, but. This is where it's at for me. And then he, and then after this, he was quiet for a while. And then now he's an old man and living in, in Britain still. And he I just started releasing music again a couple of years ago. I haven't listened to it yet, but I heard like a few little sound bites and it was, you know, it's pretty good. You know, it's an old guy just, just doing his thing, you know? Hell yeah. What song is up next? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Another heavy Jesus song. Till the Christ come back. Oh, yeah, thank you. This is fun. I'm having a good time listening to yeah. one of my favorite records with a dude that's in one of my favorite bands, or well, a person. I use dude as a general term, but I know some people are comfy with it, and I need to learn that. But yeah, yeah just one of my favorite, you know, this is awesome. I'm having the time of my life right now. Yeah. yeah. I, this is great. I, I, we've got to do something again with the rest of the band. Cause I, I think they, I think Jay would, and Jonas would both love talking to you. Uh, and I mean, in lane two, uh, Jonas is actually in the chat right now as glass beach band. What's up Jonas? (laughs) Um, yeah, but I think you, I think you and Jay would get along really well or you would hate each other, you know? (laughs) <laughs> we're, just, we're just we're just so alike yeah. and, and like, well i don't i don't i don't know anything about jay's personal life but i have a very very self-critical like weird like you know self-hatred stuff i'm working through so if he's if, if they're like me at all i think it's gonna come to blows we're just gonna beat the shit out of each other just get sick of it yeah i think i think they're doing all right in that department so maybe it'll it'll level out it should be okay, okay cool cool then then all of the bad vibes will be from me and I, I need to work on that. I need to unlearn that. It's a good basis for any friendship <laughs> to bring in all of the bad vibes. Connor, our basis. Yeah, I think he could. He would. He would be able to break it up. He would be able to 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 get everybody just like, okay, calm down, guys. It's cool. Why don't we just watch Beavis and Butthead and talk it out? 
Is Connor only the good vibes? Connor's just literally vibes. Like when I told him, like, like, he, he, I mean, he was excited and stuff. But I was like, yeah, we got management. We got a pitchfork review. We got all this cool, like all this amazing stuff. And he's like, Joe is like, oh my God. And like, and I'm like, I know, right. And then Connor's just there like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. I think uh I think I'm the excited one in the band here cuz when we got our pitchfork review and we got when we got signed and we were getting management and like Fantano reviewed us and all that stuff I was always the one who was like everyone <laughs> look. Yeah. Look at this. Isn't this great? And Jay is like a little um absolutely like reserved and kind of like values privacy That's crazy to think because yeah. their music well y'all's music is like so like 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 bursting with like energy and like all of this stuff happening so it's like it's it's funny to think that that jay just might be over there in the corner just like hey, what's up yeah i i mean jay is like in the right setting pretty um energetic i would say and i think that that like helps and like comes through in the music but as far as like um as far as people knowing us like they're they're of that mindset. Like I want as many people to hear our music as possible, but I don't want any of them to know who I am. Like that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. See, that was my original plan, but then the fellas in the band also had that <laughs> like had that mindset. Oh. And then so I was like, all right. I mean, and they they were also like, you know, you're the only one that knows what the fuck these songs are about, and you can talk about them and stuff. And I was like, yeah, fuck. All right, I'll do it. Oh my god, am I allowed to swear? I've been swearing this you entire can, time. Yeah, you can swear the whole time. Oh, okay. I mean, there are curse words on your album. No, I don't think so. Aren't? Oh. Oh, you I'm know not, what? I purposely don't write any swears. That's except right. Except for yeah. the newer music. I, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was thinking of, um, uh, I was thinking of just the themes of like, well, when you mention assassinating a president, or ask ask if anybody has, um, mm-hmm. or like that kind in of Minecraft. thing. Minecraft, yeah, in Minecraft. <laughs> um, yeah, that that to me is like is such an extreme that my mind automatically goes like, oh well, that's like that's as bad as saying fuck. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Like, yeah, saying fuck d- did not get me on the po- on the Flagler County Sheriff's Department watch list along with all of our friends. And Is everybody God. who worked on the record, like, if anybody has a credit on your record, is that, that's amazing. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I know for a fact that the entire band and then, like, people who we are involved with like uh like locally like a lot like people who like put on shows and like and um yeah so yeah that's fun they tried to out me to my family which was horrifying like because they got a hold of my instagram and my twitter and stuff and like my family doesn't know um they're you know uh they've I've, they've somehow managed to either be just not mention it because i've been very vocal about it and, like I have them blocked on everything just, just for convenience, just because they I see them every day. I don't need them on social media. Um, and it's a yeah a weird relationship not to get too, too deep into anything, but everybody's cool for the most part. Um, but yeah, I, I was like been trying to figure out a way to like, cause they don't know anything about that. And it's not like, I don't think they're like outwardly like homophobic or anything. Like my mom was a hairdresser for many years, you know, so she's been around a lot of gay people. However, I don't know how they are with trans people. So I've never heard them talk about it. Uh, I know my mom thinks drag queens are cool, um, which is not the same thing, but nope. it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how I would begin to describe what being a gender fluid trans woman is to them, like at all, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. So yeah. So they tried to out me to my dad and, uh, I had to play it off like, Oh yeah, no, David Bowie and like Kurt Cobain wore dresses. It's, it's, it's not the uh, door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That was super uncomfortable. And, um, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. So this, this would be a good time for you to plug abolish the police merch because, uh, you should abolish the police. Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> well, you can type exclamation point abolish in the chat and, uh, here I'll plug the shirt again. I'll stand up. This, 
What's this? Looking fresh. I do love this shirt. Um, it's printed on comfort colors. The design is by Nico dot Chang on Instagram. Uh, it's really wonderful and all of the money for that and the raffle of the signed vinyl, um, signed glow in the dark vinyl and signed test press, uh, vinyl is all, all of that, all the proceeds, all the money is going directly to project NIA or NIA and, uh, split between uh, some organizers in the Minneapolis community who are like on the ground directly distributing funds to the people who need it. So, and, uh, I mean like Jonas is from Minneapolis and I'm from Minnesota and, uh, Okay. So it's like, with every, I mean, especially with everything that's going on there, it's kind of like an epicenter of like s- stuff in the movement at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, I follow a lot of people on different social stuff that are doing some really amazing work, like really important stuff. And, um, and they're not doing it with anything other than wanting to literally change the world like change a lot like save people's lives you know there's yeah. no profit at, out of this which is just it's beautiful you know there's a lot of really performative stuff out there and it's just really cool to see people that actually give a shit you know yeah yeah uh, do you how, how do you feel about um like nerd based rap music by by like uh, by black people, <laughs> not like nerdcore like mean? white rappers. Um, yeah, that was my first. Not, first <laughs> no, uh, oh, this guitar just... is crazy right here. Yeah, sorry. This is like the part where it's like, oh, this is where little jazzy dude comes in. This is ahead of its time. Like there wasn't too much shit like this out there. Maybe like Sid Barrett, you know, but there wasn't really people like experimenting with like. This is abrasive for a mellow folk rock album. I'm sorry. Continue about no, nerd you're good. rapper. Well, I'm just yeah. I'm just um. There's just a Minnesota, like a Minneapolis rapper and organizer who does like a lot in the community. Nerdy, and you are D. Yeah, and you are D. Nerdy. Pharrell was in a group called Nerd back in N R E E. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. N A R D. Yeah, I don't know like too much about contemporary hip hop. I like people like Earl sweatshirt a lot. Like I like uh, his stuff and I like Mike and like Mavi and, and Navy blue and people in that scene and like H E R or her. I don't know if, if yeah. you're supposed to say the letters or the name. I, like, I think yeah, I it's think, just her, but I, okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that, that, that stuff is sick. I like Billy Woods and stuff. Um, and like, and like, uh, I'm really into like old, old school, like, <laughs> Like, like I like jazz rap because, because it's just, it's, it's fun. I like jazz a lot, like the samples and stuff, but I really like, like nineties Memphis hip hop, like devil shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's just just fun. I just really like that kind of stuff, but no, I don't know too much about, about contemporary hip hop. I would like to though. I'm just very busy. It's not my scene too. Like I like listening to it, but I I like listening to music that uh, I want to get involved with, which is like, I used to make beats back in the day. There's like, I have a few instrumental hip hop records out there. Um, thank God I don't rap, but, um, yeah, (laughs) I was, I avoided that. Um, but you know, making beats is really fun. Yeah. I did not avoid rapping. (laughs) Send me the link. Please, oh God, God, no. send me the link. <laughs> okay, I um, won't leak it. I won't leak it. I promise. If you don't leak it, I'll send it to you. <laughs> Hell but yeah. I, yeah, I've definitely grown. <laughs> it was. Did uh, you make your own beats as well? Um, I didn't. It wasn't even like beats necessarily. I did like okay. live instrumentation, like oh, sick stuff. Um, no, I'm like horrible with like Dawes and anything like that i sorry i'm just listening to the song <laughs> oh it's a great song i don't blame you <laughs> um yeah no i'm i've i've fallen more into the video side of like production and stuff and less of the um actual like music production thing. I mean, I have like a, I have a self-released like album that I did in college that I mixed and like mastered myself and everything. And it sounds like it. It sounds like I mixed and mastered myself. (laughs) Um, which is like, which is why I kind of like, I really admire Lane and Jay 
a lot because they they mix and master all of their own music. I mean, Jay did the entire First Class Beach album, and I just the amount of time and effort that they've both spent and. I'd imagine mixing that record must have been like like probably ripping their hair out by the end of it, you know, at a certain point. There's just so many layers. So much cool shit. Well, yeah. That's why there's like a uh, like 100 demos for every fucking song. <laughs> yeah, I heard um, somebody was telling me that they know you and it took you guys four years to write the songs? Fit, write the whole record? Give Something or take. Like yeah, it was... So Jay was oh, like... Oh, yeah, Jay was writing stuff for probably about like five to six okay. years. Specifically uh, for this album or like in general? Writing, well, was writing, um, yeah, the songs for this album. Like, so Jay had like Bedroom Community and Glass Beach. Like those songs are like a couple things um, that they had been like hammering out on their own for a couple of years before meeting Jonas and myself. Okay. And then when Jonas and I were like living with them and started the band together, that's when we started like getting into the nitty gritty and that like the writing and recording process after us getting like the band together was about three to three and a half years, I would say. Okay. That's, I can't believe it was that short, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and hopefully... If you would have told me that, like, yeah, it took 10 years, I was like, I believe it. I wholeheartedly believe it. I hope it doesn't take that long for you guys to make a new one. Yeah. But, you know, I'm sure whatever, whenever, it'll be awesome. It was... It's funny. In, so, Instagram's, like Instagram's, like, comment sections and everything I find pretty, like, unbearable in a, in a sense. People are just weirdly rude on Instagram. I don't know what it is, but... Um, People are rude to me on TikTok. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Cuz all your TikToks are hot takes. So like people yeah, I, I feel like people would come into I don't know. They're not rude in like a transphobic way, are they? No, not not yet. I'm waiting for it. Not sure. yet. Yeah. But no, TikTok, yeah. We're we're not like on we have a TikTok, we're not on TikTok. Yet. Not because we don't think like it's worthwhile. Cause it's a really cool platform and a lot of, I like your tech talks. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just want to point out like, this is a, a blatant Bob Dylan ripoff riff. Like, well, then it, it just stopped the minute I say that, but there's like eight Bob Dylan songs that start with dun, 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 that kind of thing. It's <laughs> like staple classic Dylan right there. Yeah. Some people, uh, I watch a YouTuber named Derek Vaughn uh, and he, and he's an old, he's an old dude that has just like, he has got like a 10,000 records in his collection. Like he's just been collecting records since he was a kid, like growing up in like the sixties and seventies and stuff. And he, no, I knew about this album before I got into him, but I forgot about this album. He reminded me this album existed when I went back. Cause he said that Donovan, the dude who's like, uh, yummy, yummy. Wait, right. Didn't you know Donovan? Didn't he do yummy, yummy. I got love in my, what? No, he did sunshine Superman and, I don't like Donovan, whatever, but like they did record label, whatever label he was on, tried so hard to force Donovan down people's throats as like the British Bob Dylan or whatever. Sure. And like, and like, and he wasn't like, he was like, ugh, it was painfully not even close. And, um, but this to me, like Bill Fay is the British Bob Dylan when it comes to like, like lyrical consistency. And, um, obviously like the tone and stuff is like very similar too, but that was my that was my rant. Bill Fay rules. Yeah. <laughs> so. Someone says smells like Bob Dylan in the chat. I'm wondering. I'm wondering what he smells like. <laughs> I've seen I've seen Bob Dylan live five times. Really? And it was yeah, it was fun. You know, um, he doesn't play like. He rewrites every song. You don't recognize it up until like the chorus or the second verse comes in where it's like, oh, he's playing this song because they don't sound anything like they do on record, which is why I like going to Bob Dylan shows because if it, if it was just him, he's going to turn 80 years old in, in a couple days. Um, I know his birthday. God. Um, but <laughs> but um, yeah, he's like just seeing this like old dude croon. If it was like the same song as I heard on the record, but now I'd be like, oh, I wouldn't want to go as much. But every time it's different. And it's really neat to see how he rearranges them. 
Yeah, well, that's a that's a Minnesota man. So yeah, man, uh, born in Duluth, raised in Hibbing. I know too much. It's like concrete in my yeah. head. No worries. I I don't know. I I find do it have a, endearing. Do you have an artist like that where you'd like the like that's like that's your person, like that's the band or that's the artist, like? Um, I actually don't. Cause it should be me. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll do some digging. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I I I don't. Um, I have like a very strange history with music in that like I was really into the few things that my dad showed me when I was younger and then I would uh, get into whatever my older brother was listening to so like Green okay. Day um, nice. My Chemical Romance like that kind of stuff Yeah, uh, around that era and then uh, and then I just kind of stopped really listening to music for years like i i mean if there was something on the radio or something i would I, but i i i think there was a genuine five to six to seven year period where i did not seek out nor listen to like really any music on my own okay um were you still playing it yeah i was still playing okay. um which is weird <laughs> But that's always cool. There's like a few musicians I know that like don't like Trace in the band, like our guitarist Trace does not listen to any music really, other than like Pink Floyd and Clowncore. Do you know who Clowncore are? No. Uh, just Google it when you're when we're done here. Clowncore? It is uh it, just go into it. It's, it's exactly what you think it is, just okay. by the name alone. <laughs> but it, it's it's goofy. Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. But, but they always make really good music, you know, like people like that don't listen to too, like, I feel like I listen to too much music, so I overthink it. Whereas like people who don't listen to too, too much of it, where it's like, you know, they usually, they find like a weird pocket of like originality that I don't hear too, too often. Well, here's hoping. <laughs> cause I've got, <laughs> yeah. Cause I've, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll release a solo record eventually. Um, That'd be sick. And yeah. I'll put you on the fifth wave chart. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knows? <laughs> um, yeah. Cause I, it was before joining glass beach, I was predominantly like a singer songwriter. So. Yeah. I want to hear the, um, along with the rap thing, because oh God. <laughs> there's, it's promised now I will go on Twitter and rant how you have not sent it to me. If I don't get it within I'll a week, I'll send you but, the uh, link right I after. Had a solo record. I didn't know you had a solo release. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I'll send it to you. Uh, there, there. Some some of the songs off that record are gonna go on to my like first release of oh. a solo, like my debut, quote unquote, or whatever. Yeah. When I when I finally do something that I think actually sounds good. <laughs> Don't. Don't be um, too hard on yourself, I think the, sure. the songwriting right. on my record is good. I think the production is not. And that's like, and that's why I've always kind of been like, oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I felt about our first EP, where it's like, I listened back to it and I was like, I mean, I think it's good for what it is, but also like, like comparing it to I Became Birds now, it's like, oh, I wish we just had the discipline to at least use a goddamn click track, you yeah. know, it would make it a lot more easy, a lot easier to listen to. Like, I mean, I don't listen to our music too, too often, but every now and then, like, I'm like, craving like that that time when we wrote that you know that'll just suck me right back into into that time and yeah so i listen to it i'm like ah oh, so many mistakes no wonder we didn't blow up on this because it like it blew it blew the entire town's mind that we're like how are you guys not who are you famous not famous from this yet i'm like i don't know fuck why are you yelling at me yeah and then and then now they're sick of us now we're they're oversaturated with us well, that's why you're moving to Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. It's better to sell out than to fade away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm moving to Brooklyn. Yeah, get 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 away from them for a while. Get yeah. Yeah, get yeah. Give somebody else a chance in Palm Coast. This song gives me uh Tom Waits vibes, but like Tom Waits wasn't even a thing yet. Like his record came out a few years after this one, his first album. Oh, Oh, a dog. 
No, a cat? it is. Yeah, it's my cat bagel. Oh, <sighs> oh my gosh! He's a long boy. <laughs> I love and cats. His, <laughs> his sister is around somewhere. His sister's name is Maybell. Are you looking for a kitty? I do. I have a kitty up on a on a shelf. Oh, what's the kitty's name? Tig. Nice. Yeah, it's named. Yeah. Uh, I named him after Tig Nataro, the comedian. Yeah, yeah, I know Tig. Yeah, because when we um, when we first my my current partner found him out on the street in Hollywood and he was a tiny, tiny little kitten. And when we first found him, uh, we took him to a a vet and they, well, not a vet, but, uh, someone who like fosters cats and they thought it was like a, a little girl kitten. Okay. So we were thinking of names and, uh, my friend Tori was like, because we we name each other's like everything. I named I named their cat Roswell after Roswell kid. Um, oh, cute! Yeah, and and so they named my cat Tig after Tig Notaro because we both love Tig Notaro. Um, and then we found out that Tig was a boy, <laughs> which really cute. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The only issue I have now, like I don't, I love like Tig as a name, and especially named after Tig Notaro. But now everyone thinks it's short for Tigger. Oh, true, true, true. No, my first thought was the comedian. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 But, which which is fine. Someone says trans cat. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. No. I I can, you know what? I can show, I... I have to be careful, but I'm, I think I'm going to try and do this. This might screw things up for me, but I, you won't be able to hear me for a second. Hello, chat. How are you doing today? You want to talk to Bagel? Bagel will answer any questions that you have. Oh, cute, cute little man. So precious. <laughs> oh my God, my heart's overwhelmed. Can you bagel see my cat? Bagel. Oh yes, yeah, cute little bean. Mm-hmm. I love it. She looks so precious right. He looks so precious right now. Bagel, if you drink my water again, I swear to God, bud. <laughs> These cats. They have a perfectly fine, fresh, new bowl of water out there. Maybell exclusively drinks out of a running sink, and then Bagel <laughs> will drink anything. Oh, my god! just gosh. drink anything. He has no respect for, for personal property or anything like that. Where Somebody asked in the chat, where's the best place to poop? Uh, in, a, in a bathroom, bud. In the Probably. bathroom. Yeah. You got a cute little plant there, I see. Yeah, um, he actually knocked that onto the ground this morning. <laughs> and uh, there's now a crack in the pot. <laughs> oh. It's all right. We'll be fine. I guess you could say it's a crack pot. I'm yeah, so sorry. I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> he just came in here. <laughs> um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna reposition my camera this is gonna be a hassle but i'll be i'll be back this reminds me do you know sonny Chirac, the jazz guitarist he also did the intro for uh space ghost coast to coast um, no, I'm, I'm not familiar. I, I am familiar with Space Ghost Coast to Coast, but I'm not familiar with the person. That part just reminded me of the opening of Sca- uh, Space Ghost Bagel. That is my water. Please, God. This is why I'm not hydrated. It's solely because of you. I love you, bud. Oh, this is such a good album closer. And just wraps everything up in a nice little bow. 
something about teddy bears too. I love teddy bears. I like that lyric. I feel like if somebody were to say that in emo, though, it would be corny. But him saying it there, it's a beautiful lyric. <laughs> what was it? Uh, the only time I'm not tired is when I'm asleep. Oh yeah, that would be that would be super cheesy in an like in an emo song. I just hate like I'm so because like I said, I've listened to every emo album ever made, and then there was a huge <laughs> there's a huge trend in like. From 2014 up until now, still, where you get the phrase sleepless nights that I am so tired of hearing of, or or just the phrase I can't sleep. I'm done. Don't, if you think, if you have a song and you haven't released it yet and you have that lyric in there, change it. Just change it. <laughs> it's been done. It's done. It's not as profound as you think it is. I'm sorry. It might mean something to you because you can't sleep. Apparently, nobody else can either. So, Different, different word, please. God, please. Yeah. Uh, when I was 19, I wrote, I, I literally started writing a song called I can't sleep because, <laughs> and where like the chorus was just singing, I can't sleep over and over again, uh, because I hadn't slept for five days. Dang. How did that feel on day five? Um, how long until psychosis sets in? Was it six? I don't know, but I did sleep like that day i mean like and i and i also hadn't eaten for for about five days i will say don't do the, what i did uh and and you should eat and <laughs> uh, and you should sleep uh the sleeping was i couldn't help the eating i could have helped uh but mm -hmm. i this is a bad thing that i used to do but i would get like so engrossed in like a project or something that i would just not i would literally go days without realizing i hadn't eaten I don't do that anymore. And please don't like, if you see this in yourself, please, please have like, if you can't hold yourself accountable to like sit down and eat something during the day, tell a friend to check in on you or something. Cause that was like a big bad for me at the time. Um, no, I was, I was the same way for a while. Thankfully, thankfully, uh, yeah, just stopped. I sleep good and I eat. I could eat better. I'll be honest. I just, I forget to eat sometimes, which is a pain in the butt, but it's all right. You yeah. know, my slips. When you work nights, it's weird. Yeah. I mean, I bet. <laughs> what, how would you feel if I wrote a song and released it on my like debut called like, <laughs> I can sleep. And like one of the lines is like, <laughs> is like sleep full, sleep full nights. Oh, it's sleep just like full a sample nights. of snoring in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. That would be a nice change of pace. I'm all for inverting and stuff. You know, I get so much sleep and I have no ill will towards my <laughs> ex. <laughs> I would love a song that is just like, yeah, me and my ex are cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be great. All, yeah. We purposely don't write love songs or breakup songs because, uh, I don't, I don't know how, how to, and I, even if I don't want to either, like, I just, yeah. there's enough, there's enough of them out there. You, plus Harmony Woods just dropped the, the best fuck you album ever. So I, you can't beat it. Yeah. No, I like, yeah, I, I, I like a good breakup song. I like a good love song. Uh, I don't need it all the time. You know, yeah. I don't need a lot of it. I don't need a lot of it. You know, another, yeah. another, like this is more of a pop punk, um, trope but like talking about like being too big for your town or like needing to like, leave this town leave this we town, could right? leave this town forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um, mean like don't get me wrong i fucking love the wonder years <laughs> yeah true i love the wonder years uh and like i don't like, think i've listened to a full -blown wonder years album well you gotta listen so. to the greatest generation okay Gotta okay, I've heard the one with the bird on it is good. Gotta listen to the Greatest Generation. That's like that. That would be my intro album for anybody who wants to get into the Wonder Years. Personally, that's what I would suggest. Uh, it really is outstanding. I, I just, I love the Wonder um, Years. <laughs> I'm pop punk skeptical. I'm a huge pop punk skeptic. You know, there's just something about it. Hey, hey, 
you know. I think I think that's okay because like too often, it is like it is sort of just an excuse for some pretty aggressive misogyny. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I do. Uh, I feel you. I get you. Well, that that album's done. <laughs> yeah, that was a great album. It I'm was. Glad I listened to it again. It was really so glad great. I liked it. Thank you for sharing that with me. And it was particularly, it was so funny to listen with headphones on because, uh, literally like every instrument is like stereo panned. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's, um, they could use a remaster. (laughs) Yeah, I think so. But that's okay. It was fun. I I love to hear the Snyder cut of time of the last persecution. Yeah. Please. With, (laughs) and they can make the time signatures four by three. Am I right? (laughs) (laughs) Oh shit! That was a good one. Thank you. Should, you should do some more stand up. Right for TV. Okay. Well, I think we. I think we should wrap this up. I mean, well, okay. you were here for uh, I became birds, which we listened to at the top here. This is going to live on the second Glass Beach channel on YouTube, uh, and it's going to enter into the playlist of um, listen alongs, along with uh, Alchemist Rats, Beg Bashful remixes, Melee with Dog Leg, uh, Grace Forage with Harmony Woods, and now. I became birds with Brandon of home is where, which I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Knife punch sent me your, your record. I'm stoked that I listened to it because <laughs> sometimes people send me stuff and I'm like, ah, I'm busy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I just opened, I did like an AMA on Instagram recently and I, and, and uh, I don't want to say foolishly, but not thinking about, still getting used to the platform that we have. I was like, yeah, just send me all everybody. Just send me your music. Fuck it. I don't care. And then I'm sitting on so much music. I'm going to listen to from people now. And I feel bad that I haven't gotten to it yet, but Hey, if you're watching, I promise I prom. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'll get to it. I love yeah. you. Hey, I did. I, I, I seriously, I feel you. I do because my pinned tweet on my Twitter is like pretty much the same thing asking people to like send me and like I, although the way my wording on it is like i can't promise i'll like show it to other people and i can't promise i'll like post about it necessarily but i like if yeah. uh, at least if you send it to me i will listen to it and i have kept to that so and there's a lot of cool stuff that people have sent me and and other stuff that's like you know how you talk about your first your ep and then how i was talking about my first record I, there are people who are sending me stuff that they're in like kind of that phase where their like songwriting mm-hmm. is pretty good. And like, I like where they're There's going. There's a lot of potential. There's a lot of potential, but it just like a good, like mix and a good master would be extremely helpful. And very like, I think, I think would, uh, I think people underestimate how much that would like help them enjoy their own music because like sometimes yeah. I'll record something and be like, there's no oomph to this. There's that, like that drive that like when I sit with an acoustic guitar and I'm just playing it in my room, it sounds fucking awesome. And then every time I try to record it, it sounds like garbage. And I'm like, Oh, this is all flat and nothing. Well, that's because I don't know anything about, about production. <laughs> so <laughs> I know, I know a little bit, but I've no very little. Okay. So, uh, Brandon, <laughs> did, is there anything you would like to, to say to the, to the kind people who are still here and maybe who are watching the VOD of this on YouTube. Um, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you like our record. Um, uh, fifth wave or die. Fifth wave or die. Exclamation point. Listen in the chat. will take you to the home is where band camp. You have listened to it now. If you've watched this video or you've been in the live stream, unless you came in late, we listened to the record. If you already love the record and you spend it all the time on your streaming platform of choice uh and you haven't purchased it and you can and you have the means do it don't put it off do it buy it and then keep streaming it because that'll do the justin bieber yummy thing play it very low while you're sleeping on a loop um what else did he ask people to do was nuts yeah i know i don't know yeah do do the uh yeah do the i became birds um I became yummy. I became Ugh. yummy. <laughs> mm, I've always been yummy. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. So cool. Thank you, Brandon, for being on. I really appreciate oh, it. This is great. I, I'm glad you said yes. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Hell yeah. That was awesome. It, it's nice to finally have uh, y'all connected to Glass Beach a little bit because 
a little bit more. A little bit more, yeah. I know. I know. We've been there's been a little bit of a back and forth, and we're both uh, we have the same management team. Oh no! Industry <laughs> secrets. We're yeah, yeah. They, there's no way they could look up their roster. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway okay cool i'm gonna go back to my my independent listen screen where it's just me i'm gonna do the spiel about the shirts and the raffle and we're gonna leave okay any last thing you want to say you said faithfully vimo die or whatever home is where forever home is where forever hell yeah back to my talk screen hi everybody all right this has been listen along i've got another one that's gonna happen next week and i'm pretty stoked on that one as well i've got a lot of cool stuff coming up here's the schedule again the next week's is cheek face uh, i've listened to empathetically no the uh, pink shift is the week after that uh the saccharin and then origami angel somewhere city tentatively and then chris farron born hot and rat boys for happy birthday rat boy i'm really excited about all of that i'm super thankful to jamie coletta for hooking up um a couple of those for me uh, very sweet and I, I'm just excited to do this stuff and I'm excited for people that are tuning in and who are also enjoying this so check out that exclamation point listen home is where get some freaking when the records come out buy that vinyl buy it it's, it might be orange <laughs> we don't know <laughs> um, uh, do that and uh, buy the music whatever you gotta do again we have uh, the exclamation point abolish in the chat we have the shirts running right now and the raffle for the signed vinyl. All of you, like, here's the shirts. Boom. And then we've got the vinyl over here. It would mean a lot to us if you would, you would get these and, and buy the raffle tickets and everything. All of the money is going to Project NIA, NIA and, uh, and also split between organizers that are on the ground talking to the communities and getting their needs met in Minneapolis. So... Good cause. The money's going to there. All of it. All the money. We're not keeping any of the money. So it's it's great. I couldn't think of much uh, better ways to get a Glass Beach shirt that says abolish the police on it than to also donate all of the money for a good cause. So that's all. I'll see you all next week. And uh, have, a, have a good rest of your week. You return to this listen along on the YouTube channel if you ever want to. It'll be there. And I suppose thank you again, Brandon, one last time. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.